a global studies major, a psychology minor, and an economics minor. My talk, at least initially, has nothing to do with any of these topics. Instead, I'd like to talk a little bit about philosophy, and the philosophy class that changed my view on the world. Last year, I enrolled in Introduction to Ethics with Dr. Thad Botham in the spring of 2013 just to fulfill an elective credit. But honestly, I was pretty excited because morality fascinates me. Intellectually examining right from wrong, uh, being a good person for me is imperative in everything I do and who I am. Um, so now, I invite you all to adorn your thinking caps as we delve into the philosophical argument that completely changed the core of who I am. And that, and that argument has to do with animal rights. Uh, do animals have rights? Uh, if so, are they equivalent to that of humans? Uh, if not, by what moral justification? Um, so here are the basic summary of the argument put together by a group of students in our class that changed me um, about four, four animal rights. Um, all other moral considerations taken into account, causing unnecessary suffering to sentient beings or any being that can feel pain is wrong from a moral point of view. And this argument floored me. No one in our class, including me, could come up with any logical objection or anything wrong with the argument. This utterly baffled me. Because the notion is simple. Obviously, things like animal cruelty are causing unnecessary suffering to animals and is thus wrong. But where this argument gets tricky is what exactly is necessary? Could this extend to even harming and killing animals to eat them? After all, is that really necessary? Do I need meat and cheese to live? So what's the first thing I do after I hear this argument? Take it to heart, go eat at Taco Bell with my friend. And all I can think about is this animal rights argument. And I tell him, you know, I think I might be vegan. <laughs> so that night I scraped together some spinach leaves from the dining hall because I don't know what else I can eat and go to work researching that whole night and that whole weekend any animal rights argument that can disprove the argument that was presented in my class. And I couldn't find anything that satisfied me. I read philosophy papers. I watched documentaries. I went through forums. Anything that could give me more information on the animal rights debate. Couldn't find anything. So I made a promise to myself that I was going to eat completely vegan until I could find an argument against animal rights that satisfied me. That as long as I could healthily abstain from causing harm to animals by eating them, then by God, I was going to do it. And here I am, healthy and haven't eaten an animal product since Taco Bell. My God, Taco Bell. <laughs> One year ago, almost down to the day. Mm -hmm. So you may be asking, what's the point of all this? Do I just want you all to eat only vegetables hold hands, and sing Kumbaya in the Hidden Valley? <laughs> no, not quite. I can't even eat ranch. Um, but please understand, I am not trying to convert you all to veganism. The title of my speech is just a play off of Stephen Colbert's magnificent work of art here. The point I am trying to convey is one of power of education that I realize looking back on this experience. That knowledge is literally power. It has the power to change the entire course of your existence, as it did mine. In one 50-minute class period, I went from being a content, meat-loving carnivore to a strict vegan. But too often, we get caught up in deadlines, exams, and grades, and we forget about the learning process altogether. So I invite you all to be open to growth, to give yourself permission to change, to be wrong, and to challenge your beliefs. Because I want you to take what you learn and really have an impact in your life, starting right now. Whatever you're learning, let it inspire you. Let it challenge you. Let it ignite you. Thank you. <laughs>